time, a concept we all accept, yet often do not understand. When we gaze out at the stars, what we're actually looking at is a grand museum of time. Every star in the sky, each galaxy, nebula, and even the black holes that we can see from Earth is actually a glimpse of the past, an image of what once was, not of what is. Light has a speed limit, around 300,000 kilometers per second. That's as fast as traveling around the equator about seven and a half times every second. When we look at the stars, we're looking at light that has traveled many hundreds of billions of miles to get here. At 300,000 kilometers per second, that means light can only cover about 10 trillion kilometers in a year. Not much when you figure how far away from us everything actually is. Take our closest star, for example. Proxima Centauri. Because this small star is around 40 trillion kilometers away, light takes 4.26 years to get here. This means that when you look at Proxima Centauri, what you're really seeing is how it looked a little over four years ago. Because of this, we've been able to figure out just how old the galaxy really is, sort of. You see, by looking at the stars and how they move, we can see that they're shifting in a noticeable pattern. It also tells us how old stars are, what they're made of, and how long they have left. All this means that we can estimate that the universe is at least 13.8 billion years old. Now, the Earth, at a relatively young 4 billion years of age, has only been around for about the last third of that time. And us humans? Well, if humanity only goes back around 200,000 years or so, that represents a tiny 0.00001% of the history of the entire universe, a grain in the wind of the sands of time. But what about the future? What does that hold for humankind? What does it hold for our planet, our galaxy, the entire universe? Join us as we take a journey all the way to the end of time, to the very distant future at the end of the universe. Welcome to 2021, our day one. As we begin our trek into the future, we can see that the Earth is still full of life. Our sun provides our solar system with light and heat, keeping everything in balance. We're sending rovers to Mars, launching a new era of private space travel and are discovering new wonders every day. As the clock starts to tick into the future, we look ahead at what is to come. Next year, two stars will crash into each other, producing a rare red nova. This spectacular explosion will be visible to the naked eye on Earth. But this unique event is only the beginning of what lies ahead. By the 2030s, it's estimated that the first humans will have set foot on Mars, sparking a new era in space travel as we become an interplanetary species. Settling on other planets dramatically increases our odds of survival in the universe by ensuring that if one planet dies, we can keep going on another. Around 2050, the Arctic ice cap is almost completely ice-free in the summertime and the human population is expected to peak at 9.9 .9 billion people before entering a declining phase as the planet struggles to support so many people. Before the end of the 21st century, global sea levels will have risen by at least 30 centimeters, threatening coastlines around the globe. As the ice caps melt, entire ecosystems and weather systems will become disrupted. And by 2100, less than 100 years from now, scientists believe that artificial intelligence will have begun supplementing human intelligence. As we travel beyond the first 1,000 years into our journey, our speed begins to accelerate, traveling faster and faster as we try and keep up with the march of the future. It's hoped that during the course of the next 1,000 years, humanity will ascend into a new era of stability and peace. As our knowledge grows and technology advances, there is a good chance that mankind will eventually figure out the issues of today, sparking a new golden era of interplanetary travel and grand civilizations. 
If the current trajectory remains the same, humanity will have reached a Type 1 civilization degree by 2250, with war, poverty, and disease all but eliminated. Populations will have stabilized, alternative energy sources have replaced fossil fuels, and people have found a way to coexist in peace. In 2310, the Voyager 1 probe, launched in 1977 and currently the furthest man-made object from Earth, finally reaches the outer edge of our solar system, the Oort Cloud, a massive expanse of icy space rocks surrounding our Sun. Other probes like Voyager 2 and New Horizons will do the same decades later. If civilization collapsed today, the skyscrapers and bridges we use will have fallen down by the year 3000. By 3500 AD, a new mini ice age is expected to begin as temperatures drop across the globe. This is part of a natural cycle, including interglacial periods and full-blown snowball Earth scenarios. There is a new North Star, Iota Cephel. Having replaced Gamma Cephel, which dethroned Polaris a thousand years earlier, Iota Cephel will keep its status for another 2,000 years before shifting constellations produce a new guiding northern light. Around 8,000 years from now, human civilization will be twice as old as it is today, provided we're still around in six millennia. As we head towards the far future, we shift our gaze into the cosmos, watching as the millennia grow into millions of years. Although things begin to get a little blurry on Earth, we can see as the universe around us begins to change and transform as the ages tick on. 13,000 years from now, the Earth's axial tilt will suddenly switch, swapping our magnetic poles around. This dramatic change has happened before and will do many more times. After a 25,000-year journey at the speed of light, the Arecibo message, a visual hello sent in 1974, begins to arrive at its destination, the M13 globular cluster. This is just one of the thousands of messages shot off into space in the hopes of reaching some distant extraterrestrial civilization. Voyager 1 leaves the Oort cloud, finally traveling beyond the last elements of its home star system. Even while speeding through space at more than a million miles per day, Voyager 1 still has 10,000 years to go before passing its target star in 40,272 AD. Following a mini ice age, the world begins to warm again in about 50,000 years, and a new interglacial period begins. By this point, many plant and animal species will have evolved and changed dramatically, hardly resembling the creatures of today. As we approach 100,000 years, we start to gaze into the distant future. While not much has changed yet in the grand scheme of the universe, on Earth and within our galaxy, things are starting to get interesting. About 100,000 years from now, Canis Majoris, the largest known star in the galaxy, goes supernova, producing one of the brightest explosions since the dawn of man. This awesome cosmic event has the potential to briefly outshine the entire galaxy, with the blaze even visible from Earth in the daylight. 20 millennia later, the Yellowstone caldera, Earth's largest supervolcano, is expected to erupt, triggering a volcanic winter that lasts for 100 years. The last time Yellowstone exploded 640,000 years ago, huge amounts of life died out as the temperatures plunged and the same is expected to happen again. After 250,000 years, the Hawaiian Islands add a new island to the ancient chain, with some of the others beginning to erode away completely. Within the next half million years, a planet-killing asteroid larger than one kilometer is likely to have hit Earth by now, sending a massive plume of smoke and dust into the atmosphere. While a gigantic impact will be catastrophic, life is expected to find a way to survive this violent event. By 550,000 AD, the fuel, like plutonium being used in today's nuclear reactors, will no longer pose a radiation threat to living beings. As we pass the 1 million year mark, we've traveled far enough into the future to be able to see big changes happening. The constellations are completely different to what they are today. The continents have drifted into slightly new positions, and if people are still around, 
They've either left Earth for distant worlds or have ascended into a higher plane of existence, one where we no longer need our physical bodies to survive. Almost one and a half million years into the future, a star passing within one light year of the Sun will disrupt the Oort cloud, sending comets of ice and rock spinning through our solar system, increasing the chances of another big impact on our planet. After three million years, a day on Earth is almost one minute longer than it is now. This is due to the Moon's gravity gradually slowing down the spin of the planet by a couple microseconds every year. 1.8 milliseconds every century, to be precise. Beyond 6.8 million years, it's become impossible for any DNA from today to still exist. Even the best preserved strands of genetic material will have broken down, leaving no physical trace of the abundant variety of life that spans the Earth. In a little less than 8 million years' time, Mars's moon, Phobos, has been torn apart by the red planet's gravity. The remaining rock and dust trail left by the tiny moon will eventually spread out and develop into a Martian ring system, completely changing the appearance of the red planet. 10 million years into the future and the Earth is a very different place. The Sun has begun releasing so much gamma radiation that life on Earth is starting to be threatened. A new ocean has formed in the middle of Africa, and visitors to our cosmic region are starting to have an effect on the solar system. In 50 million years, the African continent will crash into Europe, closing the Mediterranean Sea completely and raising a mountain range that's higher than the Himalayas. This creates a new continent, the first piece of what will eventually become a global supercontinent. Another 10 million years of continental drift means that Antarctica's island landmass has migrated north and into tropical climates, melting all of its ice and raising sea levels by an estimated 75 meters. After 65 million years, the same span of time has passed as what already has since the extinction of the dinosaurs. It's extremely likely that another asteroid larger than 10 kilometers has smashed into our planet, triggering another extinction-level event and threatening to sterilize the Earth. By 80 million AD, the Hawaiian Islands would have completely replaced themselves, the existing ones having eroded into the sea, while new, younger islands have formed as the Pacific Plate continues to shift. As we move past our first 100 million years of future, predicting what will happen next gets a little more difficult. While there are infinite possibilities and scenarios at play, we can speculate that, as the universe expands and grows, it will eventually begin to die. As stars and galaxies slowly die out, new eras and eons are born, marking the shifting of time as it speeds onwards. It's taken a hundred million years for the Milky Way galaxy to finally stabilize after a collision with a dwarf galaxy more than 100 million years ago. Stars and nebulas affected by this visit have now settled back into their previous orbits. After 110 million years, the Sun's brightness has increased by 1%, not really noticeable yet, but a worrying sign of things to come. In 180 million years' time, Earth's days are now 25 hours long. As the planet has continued to slow down, the Moon has also moved away from us, appearing smaller in the night skies and having less of an effect on the ocean's tides. The Sun has completed a galactic year by this point, relative to its position today. It has taken almost a quarter of a billion years to travel around the entire galaxy as the solar system celebrates its estimated 20th birthday. 235 million years into the future, it's become possible to predict the orbits of planets in the solar system. From passing comets to cooling surfaces, the sheer number of variables affecting the dance of the planets over this time makes it incredibly difficult to know what positions they'll be in by then. In the next 250 million years, the continents all come together, forming one supercontinent called Pangaea Proxima. The surface of Earth is now unrecognizable as increased volcanic activity and a competition threatens any surviving life. In the next half billion years, a gamma ray burst or local supernova is likely to affect the Earth, damaging the ozone layer and irradiating the surface. 
The moon has now drifted so far away from the Earth that total solar eclipses are no longer possible. By 650 million AD, the swelling sun is giving off so much more light that drier, harder rocks are locking away carbon dioxide, ironically killing off plants that need it to survive. As they die out, other complex life begins to go extinct, unable to evolve in the hot, harsh conditions. Complex life on Earth will die out within the next 800 million years, leaving microorganisms and single-celled creatures to rule the world once again. At the 1 billion year mark, we're only a fraction of the way into the end of time, but most of the action on Earth has stopped. With life all but gone, and the expanding sun threatening to destroy the world, things don't look too good for us. But this is just a footnote in the story of the universe, and as we head into the very distant future, we move into the final act. In less than 3 billion years, the Earth is completely dead, with even single-celled organisms unable to survive the bulging sun's intense 300 degrees Celsius heat and blazing light. A billion years later, the Andromeda galaxy arrives and starts colliding with the Milky Way, giving birth to a new galaxy, Milkomeda. After 5 billion years, the Sun has become a red giant, depleting the last of its hydrogen. As our star rapidly expands, it swallows up and destroys the innermost planets, including Mercury, Venus, Mars, and yes, the Earth. By 15 billion AD, more time will have passed from now than has ever existed before. The Sun is a tiny, cold, hypothetical black dwarf star, and the solar system is long gone. In a trillion years, galaxies will start running out of the materials they need to create new stars, and the stellar era begins to decline. One by one, the stars and galaxies go supernova and collapse in on themselves, leaving behind mere remnants of dust and gas. By the time we get to 100 trillion years, there are almost no new stars being formed in galaxies throughout the universe, with only dwarf and ancient neutron stars left. We've entered the degenerate era. After one quadrillion years, with only black holes left in the universe, all stars, planets, and other cosmic bodies have been swallowed up by supermassive black holes. The black hole era comes to a close, triggering the dark era, an infinite, empty void of nothingness spanning the next one tredecillion years. With no more light, heat, or energy left, the universe falls silent, frozen, and dark. Nothing exists. Until a new Big Bang occurs out of sheer chance. Eventually, random quantum fluctuations will produce the exact same conditions that led to the last Big Bang. This massive explosion gives rise to a brand new universe, expanding at incredible speeds to fill the empty void of the last one. And it all begins again.